So welcome. Thank you for being here. It's not easy to be uh, at the first talk in the morning, especially after a party. So I really appreciate you all being here. <laughs> um, my name is Francesca. Uh, as you have probably figured out by my accent, I'm from Italy. Um, and I'm the WordPress community manager at SiteGround, a web hosting company and sponsor, proud sponsor of Montreal. Uh, before doing that, I was a freelancer that built websites for other freelancers. And I spent a lot of time teaching uh, my clients how to use WordPress and how to format their text, which is something that I think it's a bit underappreciated, but actually, and people don't really put a lot of time and attention in doing that, but it's actually a very powerful way to make sure that people will read what you actually wrote. So this talk is born from that experience. Um, let's start with the statement. How many of you heard it? Probably everyone. <laughs> and so content is king. And it was declared so by Bill Gates more than 20 years ago, in 1996. And personally, when I imagine a king, I imagine it with uh, rich, lavish clothes, right? So think of a well-formatted page as a beautiful embroidery that will enrich your beautiful, already beautiful text. We will, I'm a bit of a um, internet history geek, so <laughs> this talk will be divided in two parts. The first one, we're gonna talk a little bit about history and theory, so you'll know why we do things the way we do today in WordPress and in general in formatting your text. So let's start with a little bit of history. The web is getting old. Uh, it's almost 30. It's going to be 30 next year in March. Uh, the first proposal for a distributed information system uh, dates back March 1989, so almost 30 years. Um, for the purpose of this talk, I, I could go on and on about this, <laughs> but for the purpose of this talk, we will concentrate on a couple of dates. Uh, the first one is March 12, 1989. Sir Tim Berners-Lee wrote a proposal for what we now know as the World Wide Web. Um, the funniest thing, I think, is that it was deemed vague but exciting by his boss. But ultimately, they gave him the green light, so thank you. <laughs> we now have the web. And a few years later, he wrote uh, a list of the first HTML elements. Do you know what HTML is? Is there someone that doesn't know what HTML is? Please don't be shy. We were not born with the skills instilled in our head. So if you don't know what HTML is, it's perfectly fine. It's a markup language, and it's the, basically the base of everything you see in the web today. Um, in 1995, the specs for HTML 2.0 were published as a standard, which it means that all future implementation of um, HTML are based on that original list. But finally, the most important date for us here today is uh, October 1st, 1997. Jacob Nielsen, who's a usability, one of the word leading usability experts and user interaction experts. If you don't know him, uh, I suggest you go and read his blog post because they're really eye-opening and very interesting and his books as well are very interesting. So he wrote this seminal piece called How Users Read on the Web. So how do users read on the web? Well, they don't. None of us really read the web. We scan. We scan very long text and we just grab words here and there. So this article, again, it was written in October 1st, 1997, lays out exactly how you should write 
for the web. You should use bold, you should use titles, you should use lists, you should use short sentences, divide long text in paragraphs. Uh, and so all these elements, which are HTML elements, will help you achieve readability of your text. And ultimately, you want people to read your text. You don't want people to scan. If you're a freelancer, for example, and you're writing a sales page, well, that's your salary coming out of that page. So I suggest you put extra care, not only in writing in a way that will convince people to buy, but make it also readable. If you go and have a wall of text, you lost me. I will not, even if I really need your service, if that's a wall of text, I, I can't. I don't have time. <laughs> I scan the text, I don't see what I need, I move on. All right? So this is why you need, especially if you're selling something, to put extra care in formatting your text so people will read. Before we go into formatting for WordPress, let's talk a little bit of, uh, about HTML tags so you'll know how they look like. And if something goes wrong in your formatting in WordPress, you can fix it by knowing this few HTML tags. So first of all, as we said, HTML is not a programming language. It's a markup language. It uses elements. Uh, to define the structure of a page. Um, the, the definition says it's uh, semantic, uh, defines the elements in a page semantically. Semantically is a big word that basically just says that the elements itself describe its content, okay? So if it's a, a side, it's a side. If it's a picture, it's a picture, and so on. Uh, so if I use a paragraph element, which is the base of everything you're going to write, I'm not just, you know, it doesn't just look like a paragraph. I'm also telling the browser that's a paragraph. That's not a list, that's not a title, that's a paragraph. So all web pages are based on HTML. So I, I really suggest you go and learn a little bit about it because it's, it's not too difficult, but it's very, very powerful. Uh, most HTML elements uh, need an opening tag and a closing tag uh, in the form of angular brackets, I think they're called in English, uh, with a very few exceptions. And knowing these tags will help you make quick fixes uh, if the needs arises. All these tags can be basically added in WordPress by pressing a button. So you don't really need to know them, but knowing them will help you fix things. Uh, and as you can see, most tags are abbreviation of English words. So uh, they're not really difficult to memorize. Piece for paragraph, block quote is the whole word, uh, OL is ordered list, UL unordered list, uh, LI list items. So if you can memorize those things, uh, you know what we're talking about. And this is what these elements will look like in your website. I would like to spend a few moments on the heading uh, element and introduce you to the general idea of accessibility. Uh, in HTML, you have six headings from one to six. They are hierarchical, so heading one is more important than six. Uh, don't use heading one in your page um, or post because that tag is reserved for the page title and it's important um, both for SEO and accessibility purposes. So start from H2, heading two. Uh, one of the most common mistakes that I see people doing is using headings just because they look prettier. So they'll, look, uh, they'll use a heading four without having a heading two, just because the heading four style is really nice. <laughs> and they'll use it to make it look nice, but that's not how they're intended to be used, all right? So headings, are a semantic element. They're telling the reader and the browser that that's a title. They're hierarchical, so two comes before three, before four, before five, and six. Um, and using them in the correct way 
will help your readers. And when I say the title, say help your readers um, reading through your text, I'm meaning all the readers. Uh, if you're not familiar with the concept of accessibility, I suggest you go and read a little bit about it. If you go to wordpress.tv, there's a big number of uh, videos uh, that will help you get started. So I'm not a, an accessibility expert, I wish I was. <laughs> but one thing is very clear, don't assume everyone uses the web like you do. Uh, there are people that might use assistive technologies, uh, people that might uh, scroll uh, with, uh, with keyboard, so uh, people might listen to a web page instead of reading it. Uh, so a well-structured page that uses semantic HTML um, is beneficial for everyone and it will make it uh, possible for everyone to enjoy what you're reading. So good formatting is really not about how it looks, uh, but it is about how easy it makes it for everyone to access information. So please read about <laughs> accessibility. The great thing is that you don't really need to do much uh, to achieve an accessible uh, website. You just go to wordpress.org slash themes, download the theme that it's already, that it's accessible ready. Don't mess up with the fonts, the colors, the sizes, just use it as it is, format your page um, in a proper way, and there you go, you have an accessible website. So uh, just focus on writing good content and make it readable. So we don't have time to go through all the options that you have in WordPress, um, but uh, we'll see the main ones. And uh, some things might look a bit different. I think you already heard about Gutenberg. Do, are you all familiar with the fact that there is a new editor coming into WordPress? Who is not? Okay, so quickly, quickly, quickly. After 15 years of having basically the same, more or less, editor, text editor in WordPress, in the next major release of WordPress, this is going to change completely. Uh, we're moving from uh, simple text that you can just, you know, make bold, make, um, I never know how you call that in English, italic, I think. Uh, <laughs> and add the titles, but you'll have blocks, and blocks have different styles and meanings and usage and stuff like that. Uh, also, the name Gutenberg will become obsolete the moment <laughs> Gutenberg actually hits <laughs> WordPress, but we're gonna see also a little bit of how Gutenberg works. In the long run, I really think it's a good thing that WordPress is moving to this kind of uh, editor because it will make it uh, easier for people to make very readable, rich text. Uh, for those of us that are a bit old and grumpy, it's going to take a little bit <laughs> of adjusting, but <laughs> I do believe um, in the long run uh, it's going to it's going to help. Um, if you're already familiar with the um, with the WordPress editor, is there someone here that has never seen a WordPress? website how okay perfect good um, so you already know that most icons look exactly like the icons you found in any text editor in the past 40 years so you have as we said you have different ways to format your text the editor what we call now the classic editor is what you see in your WordPress uh, website Gutenberg is the new editing experience um, and then uh, you can actually edit everything with HTML. So this is the formatting bar today. Uh, if you can see only one line, only the first line, uh, press toolbar toggle and you'll have another list of buttons. I don't know if the screenshots are clear. I know yesterday we had a bit of a 
problem? C can you see the buttons that are being pressed and more or less? Okay, if something is not clear, uh, apparently turning this off and on will help, but just stop me if you cannot see. Uh, so you have two available views, visual and text. Visual is what you see with all the buttons and what you see is what you get. And the next one is text where you can use HTML tags to format your text. Uh, in Gutenberg, you'll see a smaller, so this is Gutenberg, and you'll see a smaller selection of buttons. Uh, again, the buttons haven't changed. Bold is always a big B, <laughs> so don't be afraid. I was terrified the first time I saw Gutenberg <laughs> because <laughs> everything was in the wrong place, but I am really grumpy. <laughs> so, uh, but then, you know, when you, you get over the shock, the first five minutes of shock, then you'll see the icons are absolutely the same. So it is true that you need to do a little bit of effort to replace the things uh, in your mind, but the icons are absolutely the same icons. Uh, the other difference that you'll notice is that the bars will appear uh, when they're needed, so they're contextual. You will not have all those buttons all the time available. So we start with some of the, uh, some of the um, options available. The first one is the paragraph uh, selector. Uh, and you can see in the, in the um, traditional editor, you have paragraph, heading. Again, remember, don't use heading because they look pretty, but because you're structuring the content uh, of uh, your text. Uh, people using a screen reader, for example, depend on headings to understand the structure of the text itself. So um, please use this <laughs> to help, as we say, the older readers. Uh, the preformatted element can be used to add a block of uh, code, and this is the screenshot from the editor, and this is Gutenberg. The procedure is a bit different. You have two options. You first write a paragraph, and then you transform it into a heading, uh, a preformatted text, or any of the other elements that you see, um, or you can add a new block uh, as an heading and then pick. You see you have only 234, H234. This is because, as we say, the H1 should be reserved for the page title. And honestly, unless you have a super nested structured content, it's you will probably not go down to H5 and H6. Uh, this is the HTML for the headings. Again, open tag H1 close tag h1 um, and pre what we saw the preformatted text uh, and p is for the paragraph so they're pretty easy to remember and this is the final result no matter which which formatting option you picked uh, bold and italic, we learned how to use them more or less in grade three, <laughs> but <laughs> remember, bold is to draw attention, so don't make the whole page in bold, or don't make the whole paragraph in bold, and don't use it like in every, you know, for long sentences in every paragraph, because otherwise if everything is bold, nothing is bold. So. Try to use it just to draw attention to what you really need. The same goes for italic. Actually, every language has different rules how to use italic. It's, again, it's not an element that you use because it's pretty. It means something. So go back to your grammar <laughs> books. Uh, check out why do you use italic in your language and use it for that. Um, these are pretty much straightforward. B is for bold. E is for italic. I is for italic. Uh, HTML, and this is how it, they look like in the final text. Lists are a very important element. Uh, they work because they appeal to the left side of our brain, the analytical side. So as soon as we see a list, we know there's going to be a step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, numbered are used where there's a hierarchy and there are number requires, so one step follows the other. And bulleted or unordered list can be used when there is no order required. 
You can just write elements and then highlight them and turn them into a, into a list. Uh, make sure that you press enter when you want to go to a new element. Same goes for Gutenberg. You can either have three blocks, highlight them, and turn the, uh, three blocks because my list is made of three items, right? You can have 25, but then it gets a bit difficult to highlight them all. So if you have a very long list, I would suggest you start the block as a list and not turn paragraph into a list. It can be a bit difficult, but you always have two options. Either first write everything and then turn it into something else or start the block uh, with the element you intend to use. This is the corresponding HTML. Again, try to memorize uh, OL, ordered list, LI, list item. I promise you, especially in lists, it's so useful to know the HTML because as soon as you start to create a nested list with one of the, of the automated tools, it's gonna get messy. So you better know how to close an item and how to close a list so you can go in the text view and just move the tags where you want them to be. Uh, another element that you will find in your formatting bar is block quote. So block quote is used to quote someone uh, or something that you want to add um, in your text. So the visual output of a block quote depends on the style that your theme assigned to that. W with another language that it's called CSS, the Cascading Style Sheets, it's the language that describes the presentation of what you structured with HTML. And we'll leave it to that. <laughs> so every theme has a style.css file where all these rules are described. And this is another element, the block quote, that is often misused because it's very pretty. Usually themes, uh, developers make it really nice. It stands out with a different um, font or, you know, a cute element. But don't misuse it because this is another semantic element. So the, the moment you open block quote tag, you're telling the browser that there is going to be a quotation inside of it. All right, so don't use it just because it's pretty. If you want something pretty, ask your developer to create a nice pretty element that you can use uh, to prettify your text. Uh, in the editor, you simply uh, highlight uh, a paragraph and turn it into a quote. And in Gutenberg, you have two options, which is really neat. Uh, and the thing that I really like is that as soon as you turn a, a block into a quote, it will ask you for a cit citation or a cita citation. This I, sometimes it's E, sometimes it's I, is so confusing. We don't have that in Italian. Okay, so the citation, and I, it's always an E in Italian. Easy. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's a cool feature because, you know, a lot of time we just quote people and we don't give credit where credit is due. So if you use a quote, why not saying who said it? So you can do that in Gutenberg uh, really easily. And this is what the HTML will look like. In this case, it's a bit more uh, complex because you need uh, to, if you want to include the citation, you need two tags. And this is the final result. Alignment, we're going to talk about this. I always, always ask, I see your reaction, and <laughs> I always ask myself if I should include this or not, <laughs> because alignment is not an HTML element, it's not a semantic element, and in fact, it's a CSS class that will say how this paragraph will look like. Uh, so beside the technical aspect of this, I suggest you always, unless you speak, you're writing in Arabic or Hebrew or any other language um, that is uh, right to left, stick with left alignment. Don't use justify, don't use center. Uh, the web is not 
a printed leaflet in a digital form. So something that works very well in print, which is usually justify, doesn't work well on a screen. People with dyslexia have a very hard time uh, seeing justified text on screen because the, 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 the words get stretched and it's very difficult to see where the new sentence begins. And if everything is aligned left, we know from hundreds of years of <laughs> conditioning that that's where the sentence will start. Oh, right, if you speak Arabic or Hebrew. Um, the left alignment will create a line on the left where the eye can always go back and we know where we are. I actually saw this, this <laughs> I'm, I'm in a hotel nearby and every morning, also in print by the way, that's true, every morning I go to the lady and I say my, my number and they have the, the room number and the name and the code printed on A4 paper and it's all stretched out and every morning she has a very hard time following <laughs> with her eye the number of my room with my name and with the kind of breakfast I have. Why they didn't put every word one after the other? It would have been so much easier because she had, you know, she knew where the line starts. Instead, she has to go every time and like, oh, where is this line ending? So don't do that on screen because it's even more difficult. You cannot take a ruler. Uh, well, I do it sometimes, but you cannot take a ruler and see where this line <laughs> starts and where it ends. Um, so please, no justify, no center, no right to left, unless you speak a language that needs the right to left. If you must align for some reason, uh, there are the relevant buttons. Uh, and you don't need to align left because that's the default uh, in a LTR, LTR uh, installation. You can align only an entire paragraph, so make sure you highlight everything. This is the final result, strike through. I'm a, an abuser of strike through, I admit, <laughs> but please don't do it like me, use it for its intended uh, use. Um, it's a semantic element that represents deleted text. Uh, so, and browsers will render it as a strike uh, through text. Uh, again, very easy, but what I mean is, uh, you can see here the real intended use um, in the text. As soon as I highlight something and make it deleted, um, it actually adds the time when it was deleted. So I use the strike through, but I shouldn't because I should know better. Text caller will skip this one. Don't use it. Just <laughs> don't. Strike through. Uh, theme developers and designers put a lot of love and care in making everything nice and the palette is working and if you had a custom made theme they probably went through hours of excruciating pain for picking up 666, uh, like a 666 hex or a 667 or something like that. So don't mess up with that process. Uh, so don't introduce random colors in this beautiful palette that was studied uh, and designed especially for that theme. If you must, and I hope you don't, that's how you do it. <laughs> uh, so you just select the portion of the text that you want and press the corresponding color. In Gutenberg, you'll find a lot of options to color your text. Uh, this is probably one of the parts that I'm less fond of because it gives you uh, the power to color the entire block. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the screenshot. Uh, so it says, if you pick this, I mean, even if you're not visually impaired, I think you have a really hard time writing, reading this black text over an orange background. So I'm not super fond of this feature, but I'm very happy that the Gutenberg team added this um, 
this call out that says this color combination may be hard to read. Uh, try using a brighter background. So make sure that there is a good contrast if you must. And I, I mean, I, I get it, all right? Up until now, to get a background in your text, you needed to mess around with HTML and CSS. Now it's really easy to do, but please always be considerate. Please always, always remember that what you see is not what other people might see. Uh, I am struggling with this quite a lot because I'm getting, it's getting harder and harder for me to see both from afar and from close. So I started to notice all these things like the font size, the, the contrast between the background and the, and the font color. So if you decide to use this feature, please remember to use it uh, respectfully of other people's uh, needs. And sometimes things go wrong. So please explore both the classic editor and the Gutenberg editor. There's tons of features that we don't have time to go through uh, right now, but they're there for you to try and play around. And sometimes things go wrong. Uh, so there's a bit of uh, things that do tend to happen more than other. But now that you know uh, the basic HTML for writers, you can fix them quite easily. Nested elements. That's one is I promise you is going to happen to you sooner or later. It means that one element, one HTML element, got inside the other one. Uh, so maybe you're in a block quote uh, element, and you want to add a list right after that. Um, it, the list is going to end up in the block quote, because you go enter, uh, and the list is going to be inside it. So the thing you need to do it's not cursing at your screen, although that helps. Helps emotionally, but it will not help with your text. <laughs> uh, so just go to the editor, the text editor, and move. Now you know how a tag looks like in HTML. So move the block quote closing tag where you actually want to close the quote. And that's pretty much what you need to do. Uh, or in Gutenberg, start a new block. That's even easier. Um, another common annoyance is paragraph versus new line. So you press enter, you just want a new line, and instead you get a new paragraph. Uh, again, keep your cool. Do shift enter. Instead of just enter, do shift enter. This will create a new line for you instead of a new paragraph. Um, same things in uh, Gutenberg. Uh, so if you press enter once, you'll get a new block. If you press shift enter, you'll get a new line. And finally, my favorite, get me out of this list. <laughs> you start a list, you want to add something, and you'll keep being in the list. Uh, you want to add a new text. So again, it's pretty easy. You press enter twice, and you'll get out of the list. Or, if you're adventurous and you want to try it out, go into the text and move the closing tag of the list where you want the list to end. Uh, and same goes uh, for Gutenberg, uh, but instead of a new paragraph, you get a new block. Okay, so, as I said, I'm a major uh, internet history nerd, and I do really love a good formatted text because it really, I think it really, really helps uh, with uh, getting the knowledge that you want. So I added tons of resources <laughs> to these sli slides that you can find on Twitter, and I'm going to post them again. Um, you get the proposal by Sir Tim Berners-Lee for the World Wide Web, HTML specs, uh, accessibility resources, which I really suggest uh, you familiarize yourself with. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. And I'll go to the happiness bar after the talk, so if you want to nerd out with me about formatting text, just please join me. Uh, questions? I need... Uh, uh, okay, yes. Um, 
Yes. Okay, so the question is, <laughs> the question is, and this is very relevant to French-speaking people and to Italian-speaking people, accented uh, characters um, turn out to be weird characters uh, in your text. So, uh, if you are, that's a Unicode issue. Uh, if you are a Mac user, you're in luck because <laughs> MacBooks have the same uh, contextual keyboard that iPhones have. So if you want to have an accented E, you just press for a few seconds on the E and it will show up a small menu with all the different E's. Uh, if you're a Windows user, it's a little bit more difficult because you need to memorize a few Unicode uh, characters that come out of uh, combinations. Otherwise, in the uh, classic editor, uh, there's a button that looks like an omega, a Greek omega, and there you have all the accented uh, characters. Uh, so for example, one of my pet peeves is in Italian when you start a sentence with an accented E, a lot of people do E and apostrophe, and that's just wrong. <laughs> that's not <laughs> a correct Italian. So you just uh, look for the button, it's in the second line of uh, the formatting bar, look for the button with the Greek omega, and there you have all the special characters. They did it wrong, but now you do how to do it right. <laughs> so do it right. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a code, for, there's a name for this. It's um, Unicode um, Mosh Mosh. I don't know, but yeah, it it does it does happen. But so again, there's something that you can make sure to do right. But if a website is already done in that way, you cannot uh, fix it, unfortunately. More questions? Y if you have a question, you really need to call my attention because as I say, I have a very hard time seeing behind line four, more or less. <laughs> yes. Yes. What is a Johnson box? Oh, okay. So the question is, um, would you use a background uh, a colored element to draw attention to a part of the text? Yes, I would, uh, but use it responsibly. So if you want to draw attention to one thing, use it for that. It's very common to see in sales pages, uh, you know, these colored boxes uh, that most of the time have a call to action or in other pages like sign up for my newsletter, you have a call to action, then that's fine. But this is why I say use it responsibly because you probably want to draw the attention to one thing and one thing only. It's either sign up, buy, or, you know, if you're not selling anything <laughs> or you're not trying to get people email addresses and you're explaining something, you might want to have like a recap of what you said in a, in a colored box, that's fine, but just make sure that you have one because if you start having two, three, four, and they're in different colors, that's like, what am I supposed to look at? Where is my attention? It's the same with bold. Like, use it really to draw attention to something. And whatever you decide to use, whatever uh, background you decide to use, always remember that the font color should be with enough contrast. Yesterday, I signed up for a newsletter, and the, and the text in the sign-up box was white. The box was white, and the text was white. I was like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> So I just, I said, okay, I'm going to go blind. And I wrote my address 
And then I highlighted the thing. I was like, all right, I, I got the right address. <laughs> but so don't make this, make it readable. You really want, I, I cannot stress enough how important it is for freelancers and business owners to use formatting in a way that will get you more clients, <laughs> okay? If you're writing a sales page, you want people to read to the bottom of it what you have the buy now <laughs> button. So if the text is not well formatted, I will not get to the end of the page. No one will, all right? So make sure we can read uh, what you're writing. Thank you for the question. Do we, we have time for one more question and then I'm going to go up to the happiness bar. So if someone wants to ask, I think we're, oh yes. Ah, uh, allora, it depends. <laughs> as, as I said, uh, thank you for the question. So the question is, is formatting affecting uh, the way search engine I index your text uh, and see your text uh, and um, show it in, um, in the search results? So if you use, a, if, um, if you use a semantic HTML, which is the tags that we said are like headings, paragraph list, um, it will affect it in a way that it's, if I say that something is an H2, it's a heading two, Google will recognize that as an important element in the page. And if you, I'm, I'm not an SEO expert, but what I understand is that a well formatted page where the information you wanna give both to humans and browsers are formatted in the right way, then Google will recognize it and it will affect uh, your indexing. Because let's say you, you, are, you have a page that is about your web design services, so I would assume the H1 of the page is um, web design, uh, WordPress uh, websites, uh, and then if you have in, a, in an H2 a description of what the service is gonna be, then Google will pick up on this. So I would say that the right formatting will uh, will help you also with ranking. Of course, ranking is done with a, like, I don't know, 500 variables in an algorithm, so <laughs> formatting is just one of them, but it helps. Uh, so use, uh, it helps also because Google is moving uh, to a different kind of um, search optimization. So you probably heard it's not about the keywords, it's about really understanding the intention of the person that is looking for something. So the more the text is readable and is clear, and the more it's going to help because it will pick up on what the user really wants. So the user is the center of all of this, even before the browser. Does this? Okay. I think we're done. Thank you very much for being with me this morning and have a lovely day. <laughs>